Good evening to all the passionate faculty members, scholars, and students gathered this evening with a vision for continuous development in research domain. I'm Gokhla Priya, first year MBA student from School of Management, Dwarka Das, Govardhan Das Vaishnav College. Greetings to all on the third day of five days national level advanced faculty development program on the topic emerging research trends in management, which will guide the researchers, faculty members, scholars, and others in writing the research paper, enhancing your skills, and train us all to draw better conclusion from the analysis. We sincerely welcome our secretary, Sri Ashok Kumar Mudra, our principal, Dr. S. Santosh Babu, and our director, Dr. U. Amleshwari, and participants all across the nation. The research title for today is Scholarly Writing. Research Proposal Writing by Dr. Fazluniza, Assistant Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Madras. She has graduated and published a publication in Indian or international journals and papers in national and international seminars, organized and participated in eight workshops and seminars. Her area of specializations are information society, scientific writing, and knowledge organization. She is the winner of the Emerald South Asia LIS research proposal for a comparative study of research performance of LIS schools in South Asia. I kindly request the audience to mute the mic and turn on your videos. If you face any technical issues or if you have any queries during the session, kindly post them in the chat box as per the request of the resource person. Now the platform is open for the session, ma'am. Thank you so much, Gokula Priya. Uh, before we start, I would like to thank um, place my heartful thanks to uh, Dr. Amaleshwari, ma'am, for uh, remembering me. I mean, we just met once during a session at their uh, department, and uh, she remembered me, and she's called me for this session. So thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. And I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Lokeshwari for uh, being in touch with me and for reminding me whenever, you know, this uh, session is there. I, I was a little busy and she had the patience to actually put up with me. I think I still not sent her something she asked me. So she's got a lot of patience. So thank you so much for uh, uh, your patience and for organizing this uh, five day workshop. Uh, before we start. Uh, I would like to um, uh, I would like to also thank the management of the uh, DG Vaishnav College for uh, allowing their faculty to have such a, to organize such an important workshop and in, in fact a pertinent one, uh, especially considering the research scenario in our uh, uh, in our country itself. So it's a very very good uh, workshop uh, to talk about emerging trends in research, uh, um, whether in management or in any other subject also. But you know, it, uh, research is something that we have to go towards and we really need to know how to do it. So in that way, I would like to thank the management also. Uh, so before we start our session today, I would just like to request uh, to our participants as to what is it that they are looking forward from this particular session. So like uh, the topic was already mentioned, like it is on uh, scholarly writing and it is on, you know, how to publish in high impact factor journals. So before we start off, um, since it's an online session, so if it is, if we are having offline sessions, we can have more interactions. We can talk to people. We will understand what their needs are and all that. So we will have one, uh, 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 you know, a, a one minute window where all of you can probably just uh, maybe use the chat box or if uh, you know you can raise your hands and you can maybe talk uh, tell what are, what is it that you are looking for in this particular session so i'll give you the keywords <coughs> okay so we have uh, a very nice enthusiastic participant here we have uh, uh, miss suvarna shanmugam uh, if you are here uh, maybe you can unmute yourself and Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, Faizunia. Faizunia, ma'am. Fazul, you can call uh, me Fazul. Okay, Fazul. Okay, okay. Ma'am, um, what actually we all, the teaching fraternity and the students are looking is that nowadays a lot of fake journals are coming. That is the only first thing. And second thing is that most of the research scholars, like uh, if you consider universities of high value like Anna University, especially faculty from computer science and all, uh, they will be given a list of journals. Okay. So, and the research scholars will be asked to publish in those journals. By the time their article gets published, those uh, and that uh, list will be, be changed. Again, they have to publish the, another article and it costs a lot and it is a mental tension and uh, it is time, I mean, it's a very time consuming process. Absolutely. So, this is what I would like to uh, be addressed in this session, ma'am. I would like to. 
Okay, so you would like to know question. where you uh, you want uh, to publish. Where is it that you would like to publish? How do you identify the right kind of journals to get yourself published? Exactly, ma'am. Exactly. Your, right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so How much. How do you identify the right journal? Absent your uh, query. Anybody else? Now you told me, um, um, Madam Suvarna, you told me that you know in Anna University, I, I'm aware in Anna University they do uh, specify they have a, a list of journals which they give. Um, uh, they have a, a check one, check two list of journals where they expect them to be published. And then you say that you know tire one, tire two. So then you say that they are not available in that particular list. Sometimes they've been taken off from the list, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? You can even post it on the chat box if there is something else. So, what I would be covering today, because I wanted it to be specific. See, Dr. Thousand, can I just go ahead? Uh, yes, so, this is me. See, why this specific topic means there is, there is again a very big confusion between this UGC list, UGC care, and again when it comes to Scopus, Web of Science, and you have PubMed and all these citations today. Google Scholar, uh, we are not aware whether the uh, Google Scholar has stopped citing or is it still allowing the citations to happen, how to get it indexed. Because when it comes for researcher, for them it becomes mandate. I think UGC has now come out with some regulations telling that research scholars need not go for this mandate because there are so many predatory journals where it has become a very big market, as you know very well. So we wanted to just to know, give the uh, attendees, me, everyone, a very big insight on how to choose a journal for taking your research work to be published? Because what happened uh, very recently was in a conference, few of our scholars published. They had checked the plagiarism. Actually, the plagiarism checker had once checked and it is still in the internet showing that percentage of plagiarism where they are not even able to come down with it. So if you consider all these things, so I think it will be very great evening for everybody who are attending and who are joining yeah. us to come out with some clarity. Thank you. Thank exactly. you. Of that is the reason why I thought that I'll talk to you first, because I don't I think Gokla Priya, Madam has got some technical issues. Let us wait patiently. Sure. Yes, um, I, uh, I'm audible, right? Yes, yes ma'am. You are. Yeah, OK. So um, there, this is the reason why I didn't want to just go ahead with the presentation that I have. Rather than, you know, we can make it like an interactive session. And, you know, you can tell me what is it that you're looking for. And I can actually uh, correct or, you know, maybe probably give you some insights on it. Now, as far as, um, yeah, so can I start uh, my presentation? Can I share my presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So as far as um, these um, um, journals are considered, like, you know, you're talking about UGC list of journals, Scopus and Web of Science, which are the go-to journals right now, which we have been prescribed to by the uh, University Grants Commission itself. So unfortunately, we have to um, adhere to that particular list. We have to adhere to that particular list because it has been given to us. Now, um, why it has been given to us? This is a huge nexus which is going on. All these things are something. So as far as um, these um, um, and um, uh, journals are understand why we have reached this particular point. What is a what is what is the problem? I mean, why have we uh, uh, been told to publish in these journals and not in some other journals? What is the reason for that? So first, I think we have to kind of we get an understanding of that. So if you are aware, okay, there was a time when um, please let me know if I'm not audible at any particular point. Is it okay? audible? Are audible. Are audible yeah, fine, fine, fine. So there was a time uh, when uh, you know when um, there were no restrictions and uh, people were allowed to do research for the sake of research. So everybody did research because they wanted to do research. They wanted to prove something to the world. They wanted to share their publication to you know to the to the people to the fraternity, and you wanted to be the first one to have done that particular research and all that. So that is the reason why people did research initially. And then there came about, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of incentives. People started giving incentives, and then you had this huge uh, um, cold war, which was which was there, which broke out, and you know, then research started gaining importance, and publications became uh, started becoming important, and there was this huge phenomena of publish or perish, whereby either you publish, you share your research with the fraternity, or you 
uh, your, or your research dies or you don't get any kind of funding or something like that. So then uh, all the institutions, especially in India, uh, how it took place was um, initially, you know, you just had to publish in a in a journal and you were given the promotions or whatever and all that. Uh, then they saw that everybody is getting published. Everybody was you know, having a lot of publications. So they said, okay, let's put some kind of a uh, 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 mark to it. So they said that you have to, each publication, each uh, journal should have something called as the ISSN number. I'm sure all of you are aware of the ISSN number, which is nothing but the International Standards Serial Number. And you have an agency which provides the International Standards Serial Number. In India, it is provided by an agency called as NISCARE, which has its headquarters in Delhi. Are you aware of that? So anybody can apply. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yeah, ma okay, okay. Because I can't see, I can't see the screen. I can only see my my uh, screen is shared. So unlike in Zoom or in this thing in Google, I think you can't see once you share it. Um, so I was telling you, yeah. So um, so this ISSN number was given out. And that particular time, people started, everybody started flocking for ISSN numbers. Uh, and then the UGC came out with a list saying that, no, I it's not enough that you are peer reviewed and you have an ISSN number, but we will give you out a particular. So ISSN number in the sense that people, everybody around the world, everybody, everybody was trying to publish in an ISSN uh, journal. Okay, it was very easy to get an ISSN number. You just have to uh, fulfill certain details, and that's it. You can you, your journal will be awarded an ISSN number. But it was found that uh, a lot of uh, uh, academicians or researchers who are in this particular field for the need of next promotions or for the need of any kind of a benefit what they were doing is it was found that they started their own publication they started their own um, journals and after six months or after four months or after you know how much ever they required so there was a particular requirement like you know if you want to become an associate professor you need to have so many uh, journals to complete it now now also it is there right now if you want to get your uh, uh, phd published then make you have to have uh, at least uh, two uh, in the care listed journal so like that it was there that time they brought in some kind of a restriction so the problem what i'm trying to talk here is that whenever there is a restriction people try to find some way or the other and uh, that's what happened and there was a restriction uh, uh, whereby they placed that you know ISSN you have to have and people started going clogging and they started getting the ISSN number but again um, it was very easy to get, obtain the ISSN number and it, there was, it was not sustained the journals did not sustain so they used to get the ISSN number publish the number of uh, 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 articles required and then that journal used to be shut off so it was not fulfilling the purpose of the journal itself it was not fulfilling the purpose of scholarly communication or you know or or contributing to the uh, to the uh, discipline or to that particular subject itself so that what's happened where people where ugc again took note and they said that okay ISSN is not uh, doing any help so let's go for the next one step ahead and they brought out a list in uh, 2000 eight or nine something like that they brought out a list called as the ugc uh not 2008 i think 2011 or something 11 or 12. okay so uh they brought out a list called as the ugc list of journals i'm sure you're aware of it ugc approved list of journals now where did they take this list of journals was they took from two very popular uh multidisciplinary databases which were very popular across the world and these two databases were not just normal databases but they were also called as they were indexing abstracting and citation databases so this uh, what it means is that you know indexing means it provides a location of that particular article which you're looking for abstracting means it also provides a summary of that article which you're looking for and citation this is the word the citation means that it determine it also helps in determining the quality of the article Okay, unlike anything else, so citations um, are hugely helpful in determining the quality of the article, which we will also talk about a little later. So they went for something called as the UGC list. Now, this UGC list of journals, it consisted of three databases. One was the Scopus database. One was the Web of Science database, which were not from India. That was from US. Uh, we'll talk about these databases more in detail. And another database called as the Indian Citation Index, which was from which was basically of all of the Indian journals that were produced here, which are being brought out by the Indian uh, companies publishing agents now in indian citation index there were a lot of um, uh, uh, journals that were found to be spurious in nature not uh, you know they were not found they were not they were found to be having a lot of uh, um, in, inconsistent irrelevant and duplication of work was found to be there okay so because of which anybody could get published in those journals because of which after a few years okay after once there was a 
uh, news article i think uh, even in the hindu there was a news article uh, where it was published that about 5000 journals from the indian citation index were found to be uh, uh, predatory journals and all this came out after a person called as jeffrey beel he did a study on uh, these kind of predatory journals predatory journals in the sense that you know you can uh, you must be getting as academicians i'm sure that you must be getting mails from publishers who say that you know you want to get published uh, just just one week's time so uh, you know you can uh, send in your manuscripts and maybe subscribe to our uh, journal for about a month or something so without any kind of a peer review what happens is it's not just about payment it's also about there is no peer review that is going to be done there is no editing of your journal so nobody is there to to review your article so basically whenever you write a scholarly article there has to be a review of that particular article so there has to be somebody some expert team who reviews the article okay uh, or a peer group who reviews the article and and gives their comments or checks whether this particular article has been written in the ethical way the research has been carried out in the right manner and uh, and all the findings are actually true uh, to what they claim to be so that editing process is very important so what the peer review does is is just keeps off with the editing process so you don't have a real editor in place in uh, 2018 scrapping only those journals and then again in 2019 scrapping the entire list of journals now if you published between that particular time if you have anything published between that particular time when it was included and when it was uh, there in that particular in the approved list then that will be will be taken up because as a stand they have agreed that they will um, they will uh, because it was because you are unaware or that it is excluded so therefore that particular time that particular period okay from till june 18th or till uh, april 19th okay uh, if it was if your art, if your uh, journal was included and if you have published an article then that will be included for your whatever promotion basis but after that period so if you have published in uh, in the month of october 2019 Okay, and this was stopped. This list was stopped in in uh, June two thousand sixteen, or sorry, June to sorry May two thousand nineteen. Then or April two thousand nineteen. April two thousand nineteen. Then it will not be accepted. So this is something that you should understand. This is what the UGC takes a stand on. And then later on, after they they made a careful observation and they said that ICI has maximum number of plagiarized journals or predatory journals. So we'll come up with something new for the Indian journals, and that is how this. Uh, uh, UGC care list was born which was uh, which which is under the aegis of the Savitri Bai Phule University so any um, um, journal that needs to be included in in the UGC care list again will have to approach through the proper channel through the vice chancellor of the university and then uh, uh, try to get it included into the list itself now even in the ugc care list you find that uh, you know in 2020 that particular uh, journal is included and maybe after 6 months or something like that okay uh, that particular journal has been removed it says stop from so and so date have you all seen that on the ugc care list yes yes because once once you publish and after 6 months it might not be there in the care list yeah exactly so that also happens so how do you choose a particular journal how do you decide how do you choose that you know i should not make a mistake and how i should not uh, select a journal which is not uh, in this particular list so uh, it is it is uh, pretty much difficult it's not a very easy job like you know we are researchers we are academicians and you know not uh, you people because I'm, I'm a librarian i mean i i am a library information science professional so my job is essentially to know what are the journals where you can get published in so my job is all about information sources but your job is more about doing research in your particular area so you can't be focusing on doing your research and also finding out which is the right journal to publish on so that's a kind of a tough job so what do we do how do we overcome this issue there are two ways in which it can be overcome one is first thing when you are doing your research itself when you are starting your research when you are you're in your initial phases of your research itself make sure that you choose the sources right for your literature review okay because i find a lot of people uh, choosing it directly from school or scholar google scholar or doing their references right at the end of the research you know not giving so much time to doing or not only really time not spending much of time to perform a proper a good kind of a robust review of literature i see that this particular session also excuse me also has a, 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 the first day you were talking about literature review itself so it's very important to go to do a good uh, literature review a review of literature from the journals or from the sources where you would like to get yourself published so it's very important to 
choose those kind of journals okay so when before you submit your manuscript before you start writing your manuscript before you start writing an article itself it's very important you choose the journal and um, tweak or write your article uh, as in um, to choose that sorry to suit that particular journal itself so how do we do that so there are a lot of journal selection tools which are available. So this is what I was thinking of talking about. OK, I mean, I was talking I was going to talk about the impact of review of literature and then research design and all that, because this is the basics. So if you're going to get your basics right, then everything else is going to go right. So how are you going to do your review? Where are you going to search for your articles? That's also very important because that is going to play a major role in deciding where you get published. They have a lot of uh, 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 journals for uh, management sciences. So if I would like to get published in Emerald, okay, by um, Emerald is a leading publisher from UK. So if I would like to get myself published in Emerald, then it's important that I also um, cite or I, you know, I refer a lot of Emerald journals. Okay, what has been published in that particular? And if I'm going to use that, you have to think a little bit like a businessman. Okay, So what the publishers want or what the journals want is I need citations. I need to make sure that my you know, my citations for my journal or my uh, publication becomes higher. It goes higher. Right. So how will it go higher? Only if you as a researcher are going to cite something which has been done in that particular paper, something that is related to your, your work also. So you need to search like that. You need to uh, identify the journal first and then uh, Plan your uh, work, plan your research according to that particular, not, not um, um, I won't say that you should change your area of research or change your, you know, the entire, uh, you know, your research itself. Research is fine, perfect. What you're doing is right. Just tweak the way you write it. Just make sure that you adhere or you try to um, uh, uh, align it with the policy of the journal that you are selecting. Okay, so it's very important to select the right journal. So where are the places that you search for when you do your review of literature, when you do your search for the review? So that is very, very important. So you have to identify being a, uh, uh, you have to choose which journal you're going to choose your articles from for your review. And that is what is going to help you in publishing and getting yourself published in those journals itself. So I would like to talk to you. Uh, little bit about some journal selection tools okay so there are a lot of journal selection tools which are available mm -hmm. um so first thing uh okay we'll just go to the journal selection tools and maybe i'll come back to this yes so there are a lot of journal selection tools which are there but uh my personal favorite is um, uh, edance editing which you can uh which I'll, I'll show you but other than that there is this is jane jane is for uh uh, journal author name estimator which is basically used in um, in uh, for uh, psychological sciences and uh, biomedicals and all those things but since most of you are from uh, uh, management sciences right so maybe i can just show you you can go to this particular journal and i can show it to you most of you are from from management sciences right yes ma'am yes ma'am so i'll go to edans I'll go to Edans. Journal selector. So what's the most important thing is select your journal first before you think of publication itself. Do not ready. What most of the time, what the mistake that we do is we get our manuscript ready. Okay. There's no doubt about your research. Your methods and your results are not going to change but the way you present it will definitely change so therefore select your journal first select your journal first okay so there are two ways in which you can select one is you can use a journal selector if you're totally unaware of it or you look at your review of literature where is your maximum review coming from which journal have you looked at which journal think about where you want to get yourself published make sure you choose those kind of journals choose reviews from those kind of I mean, choose articles whose reviews uh you know you're reviewing the uh, articles of those kind of journals so that it will come in your references yes anybody has a doubt yes ma'am there are two queries ma'am which has been posted yeah yes uh, the first query was uh, want to know which tool or technique to use for the data collected and how to get our article besides me so that was the first question oh how to get the article uh, be cited more to be cited more i just yes 
one second i'll i'll, I'll just see that myself one second sure uh, want to know which tool or technique to use for data collected and how to get our articles to be cited more okay how to apply and get approval for a journal from ugc okay uh, pin paid or prepaid prepaid or unpaid journal is it myth or uh, uh, pin paid pin paid or paid um um uh, miss harini uh, what uh, pin paid i didn't get pin paid thing uh, data collection uh, Dr. Srinivas, I will not be talking about data collection. Uh, how to get your article to be cited more? Yes, I will be talking about that. We will discuss that now. I don't get what we meant by uh, what you meant by paid. Ah, yeah, paid or unpaid journal. Fine, yeah. Uh, uh, paid journals, they do exist. Okay, uh, not predatory, but paid journals do exist. Paid journals, in the sense, is like when you're talking about um, um, uh, um, article processing fee. I, I will talk about that. How to get your uh, journal approved from UGC? We we will get, discuss that at the end. So right now I'll be showing to you about uh, how to select a journal. Right now I'm showing about how to select your journal. Okay, is it fine? So we will just see right now the selection tools. I will be very happy if you could give me an abstract or a keyword, something that you have. Maybe if you have it with you, you can just post it on the. Uh, um uh, chat box and i can just uh, pull it up so that you box so an abstract a small abstract fintech this is a word if it, do you have any kind of an uh, a small okay influencer marketing okay so you here fintech okay fintech i'm not i don't know if fintech whether it exists okay it doesn't result or anything it needs more fintech or oh, what was the other one influence influ influencer influencer marketing right Marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this EDANT is a pretty good tool. Uh, they also uh, offer not only um, this, let's see. Okay, influencer marketing. So you have, so it brings you a lot of um, uh, list of journals which are there. Now, if, you know, if you have an abstract, okay, you can just cut and paste the abstract because you can write the abstract in the beginning itself. Like I told you, your research is not going to change your results are not going to change only how you're going to present it present this is going to change okay it's going to you are going to just change the way in which you want to going to present it so that you get yourself published in a high quality journal by when we mean high quality journal we're talking about a peer-reviewed journal and indexed and uh, indexed journal which is available in one of the leading indexing databases okay so that is what we mean by a high quality peer-reviewed journal with an impact factor okay so we will talk about what we mean by impact factor what we mean by sci okay so we'll talk about that and paid what harini was talking about paid access so what do you mean by open access paid okay open access paid access so there is something like that which which we have been wherein we need to pay for the for publication so we will talk about that also so right now you can make note of this particular tool which is called as edans journal selector okay so you can see here uh, so I just gave only a few keywords. Okay, I just gave a keyword, and you can see what it says. So there is a particular journal's name. The name of the publisher is there, and then there is an impact factor also for this. Now, what you need to see for, what you need to look for before you select a journal is you need to look for uh, whether it has a proper authority. Does it have a proper authority? Who is the publisher? Is the publisher a popular person? Is the publisher somebody who is there or who is, uh, uh, you know, who is in this particular field for some time? Do you Are you aware of the publisher? Once you know the publisher, then you look at the name of the editors. Who are the editors of this particular journal so every journal will have some kind of an editor okay again a peer team okay who is the peer team who who you know who takes care of editing for this particular journal so you need to be aware of who's there who, who heads this particular uh, agency itself so uh, like for example um, there have been cases okay where you know um, they, I, I get mails where I I am uh, appointed as an editor or they ask me to join to be an editor of a particular uh, journal or something like that. And that journal is all about journalism and communication. And I have no idea about journalism and communication. So how can I be an editor for that journal? So they just send you blind mails. 
and what happens is sometimes people get very uh, excited by it okay so just imagine i am an editor of a particular journal a very good you know leading journal i am an editor of a journal then it's a it's a very interesting thing to uh, to hear so uh, uh, so what happens is like you know you immediately agree but then there is not even one uh, article that is that is being sent to you okay so you don't correct any article but your name is there as an editor itself you have to be very wary about such things okay so just because you're going to be getting a promotion or you you are looking for some kind of a higher position so don't accept such things make sure that you uh, 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 check the quality of that particular journal okay and see if you are capable of you know of uh, uh, doing justice to that particular work and only then agree to be an editor so there was this very popular case a few years back okay of um, uh, there was this uh, magazine on uh, 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 on uh, on e vaping uh, are you aware of e vaping vaping techniques electronics electronic smoking e smoking vaping have you heard of it Can you no, hear me? ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Okay. 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 So there was a journal which was on vaping. Okay, uh, and uh, one of um, uh, a lot of I mean people were a lot a lot of people were publishing on vaping. So uh, generally it was considered to be a very safe way. People started talking about uh, uh, about vaping being the alternative to smoking. Right. You must have heard of it. I mean, e-vaping, electronic vaping. It's el electronic smoking. It is. It's not like normal smoking. You don't have nicotine, but you have a kind of a small uh, tool which will help you to uh, to give the same kind of uh, stimulation to your brain when you you know when you smoke or something like that. So, uh, um, uh, and there were a lot of studies that were being carried out to saying that e-vaping is not bad for health and you know it, it doesn't have as many side effects as uh, as uh, nicotine smoking has i mean the normal smoking has and all that uh, and uh, there was one particular journal which was publishing a lot about that and you know in medical sciences you, how how sure you have to be even a 0.1 error means that 10000 people could die right so uh, uh, and then finally they found out that that particular journal was actually sponsored by it was sponsored by um, uh, um, a vaping making machine company okay so they were the people who were sponsoring publication for that journal and uh, one of the reviewers who was listed was one of a leading uh, uh, doctor from a diabetes center in chennai okay and when they reached out to him to talk to him about you know you are you are, you are named as a reviewer have you ever reviewed the papers he said no they just wanted to put my name and they i said okay and they put my name but i have never reviewed any paper on it so you can understand this this is what contributes to a predatory journal itself so it's very important that you try to identify the uh, the authorship pattern from where does it come who is the person who's responsible for it so that responsibility the statement of responsibility with whom does it rest so that is something which is very important which you need to identify and which you need to be 100% sure of when you are going to check for your uh, you know uh, before you start publishing itself i'll just show you one um, this this thing which i have just put up on the screen if you can see yes so you can see this so there are two friends who are talking I'll check it out i have been asked to be a paper review for a ne for next year's conference so he says oh wow so i guess they consider me an expert in the field he says really what was your qualification i had published a paper in the same conference the year before but that means that your paper was reviewed by people whose quality qualification was to be reviewed by the previous years people whose only qualification was you know like that okay only one year so there he's just published a paper and immediately he's been called as a reviewer right do you relate to it yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah so so it's very important to identify that it's very important to identify that and don't get into the heat of the moment and just grab the opportunity but in fact look at whether this is something that i really deserve this is something can i do justice to this particular thing and then you think of moving into that uh, uh, to take up taking up this is being a reviewer not only being a reviewer, reviewer but even publishing in that particular place just imagine if somebody who's just reviewed one year's paper i mean has published previous year and he becomes a reviewer next year do you really think that he qualifies to review your paper do you think he becomes an expert no experts mean that they have a lot of uh, they know what's happening in the field itself not only in india but in other countries also so something like that so you need to identify so uh most important thing is go with the publication you need to identify who the publisher is so go with the publication agency who is the publication agency not just by the title of the uh, thing but with the publication agency and when you make use of such tools like you have i am just showing you one edans journal selector so the same way i can also show you another one springer okay 
then there is a think check submit so i'm just showing you some of them i'll also give you a list of them so you can make use of it so the first thing that you do before you uh, uh, you know before you um, uh, write start writing your article the first thing that you should do before you start writing an article is that it, it's very important that you choose your journal please choose your journal and then start writing your article so that's the first step okay there's the first step like i'm not talking about the research research what you do is perfect okay everybody is good at their research the only problem that we face is in writing it in presenting it and getting it published so uh you have to identify where our problem lies so our problem lies in only the publication not at the research part research part each of us is very good at it there's no way that we can you know we don't do good research research we are all good at it okay the only problem is because we face is in getting choosing the right journals and getting published in those in those journals so make sure that you check whether the journal is a good journal or not now if you you find that the journal is indexed in SCIE. Okay, SCIE stands for Science Citation Index Expanded. Now, like I was telling, I'll just go back to the PPT again to show you about the um, impact factor and what we mean by uh, you know uh, by quality and all that. We'll come back to the predatory journal thing. So, when you're talking about journal selection, can you? Um, uh, my I hope my screen is visible. I'm sharing the entire yes, screen, so I think it should be visible. Yeah. So. So this is right, right? You want me to make it bigger or this is okay? This is fine. I'm trying to make this smaller. Yeah. Now this is okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, this is visible. Yeah. I'm not going to the uh, last screen. So I'll have to keep shifting from one place to another since I'm not following one pattern. Okay. <clears throat> so John, when you select a journal, you have to identify who's going to, what is the focus of your work? Okay. What you're going to do? Who is the person who's going to be interested in? So don't just focus on getting yourself published. It's also important, like, how are you benefiting the, uh, the society? How are you going to benefit the society by your work? Now, let me tell you now, since we're at it. Okay. So you can see people are talking about UGC, UGC bringing out another list. And, you know, we are seeing um, a lot of people, uh, again, UGC has regretted this decision also, because the more you try to push people, the more you try to 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 uh, to force something on people okay so here it is like forcing people to get themselves published in uh, in impact factor journals and all those things so you're forcing so when you force people then you're giving rise to some kind of mall practices so once this forcing came out then there was also a video which came out i, I i'm sure you must have seen that video on uh, how people were selling um, uh, thesis and papers uh, outside delhi university did you see that video there was a video there was a there was a uh, investigative uh, journalism video which was made on people selling uh, thesis phd thesis master's thesis uh, papers uh, have you did you see that video just close by delhi university you have not seen no no i have not seen it i have heard that uh, there are people and agencies doing but not seeing yes, the video there are in fact there are <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Amal, ma'am, you're right. Actually, there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people. You know, I myself. I mean, I, I'm uh, as part of our entrepreneurship career hub. I mean, you know, we had gone to a uh, university for their, you know, to check their startups and all that. And uh, uh, one of the startups, you won't believe it. One of the startups uh, was about uh, publishing. Okay, publication agency where they say we are scientific uh, publication and we do all kinds of publication for you. You want to get published in a peer-reviewed journal. You want to get published in a impact factor journal come to us and we'll write for you so all this happens because you are being pushed you are being pushed to do something which 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 is not natural okay so i think that is a very wrong thing to do and that is why ugc has kind of uh, now tweaked the thing and they are not uh, very much particular about uh, the you know the publications to be mandatory not to be mandatory but still they do insist on high impact factor journal publications and you know for for points or for higher promotions and for uh, uh, accredited accreditations and all that so they do look for the publications now what happens is um, uh, you know most of the pub, most of the publication agencies the the most popular ones okay are from are not from indian are not india based ones okay and and they publish in a language that is foreign to us so it's not an it's not in our own language so again people find it very difficult to express this you know express their uh, research work in that particular language itself so therefore these are the problems which we face so we have to identify the areas where we face the problems and solve them rather than go to these kind of uh, agencies because there are a lot of agencies which say that we will publish your work for you or we will get you uh, you know 
thing for for of course monetary benefits and all that so uh, this comes up because of this uh, because uh, this this scenario is there because uh, the ugc is uh, pressurizing on publishing in these uh, uh, very popular and very difficult to get published in databases so web of science is not an easy database to get published in it has very high quality standards the same way scopus is also not a very easy database to get published in so what you can do is you can um, i you you know identify indian journals which have a good uh, uh, you know uh, reputation okay good reputation or or try to do a lot of teamwork i think if you want to get published do not uh, indians are very you know very modest people also and also sometimes they think we think that you know we are very uh, smart and we don't want to uh, have a collaboration with somebody else two things one thing is we are very we are very modest okay we think that uh, that you know uh, cha what am i doing i'm doing a very normal work it's nothing major even though you're doing something major you don't want to show off okay the same thing us people will show off like like as if it's a huge thing but we have done it every day okay but we don't like to uh, uh, beat our own trumpets especially, especially women uh, you know in our country we do a lot but we don't beat our own trumpet we just we just take it up take it on and we just keep on doing like you know as if it's a uh, daily work but this is doesn't that doesn't happen in other countries <clears throat> One is we are very modest. Even in our research, also we are very modest. We think that this research is oh, this is very simple. So either lap or any publish manita. Those people would have done a much better work. But then when you read their paper, you know that oh my god, this is this is what they have done. Oh, my research is so much more better. Only thing is we wouldn't have thought of publishing it at all because we always underestimate ourselves. That is one thing. Second thing is you are afraid. You are afraid to uh, uh, to interact or to talk or to express yourself, and you know because we don't we are not very strong about the language itself. Okay, so that's also another problem. So the one of the ways in which you can overcome this problem is to do a teamwork find collaborators go for it reach out because we are the underdeveloped country or or rather developing country and they are the developed country so find out Uh, identify some research partners from other country or identify research partners from across the world across uh, the, the country okay make some kind of a, you know create some kind of relationships or build some kind of relationships uh, the i'm sorry um, uh, professional relationships or based on your research based on your area which which area you are interested in and uh, right now we are moving towards collaborative work collaborative efforts so they are trying to give you more points for collaborative efforts and collaboration uh, mark me it does help you to get published in in good journals in you know high highly published uh, highly um um Uh, peer reviewed and impact factor journals so you will be able to get yourself published in those kind of journals so if you're not able to do it alone they make sure that you have a good collaboration network or a good network with you with whom you can publish and don't worry about being the first author second author and all that because as far as web of science is concerned or scopus is concerned all authors get the same point same weightage same weightage is what we give as information professionals we give same weightage to how many ever uh, uh, authors are there for example in sciences and in in you know sciences life sciences and all that you can see that one paper one research paper will have about 250 authors or 180 authors okay so it's it's all the people in that particular team itself so what we have understood is first thing is that when you are going to, if you want to get yourself published in a good uh, journal then make sure that you do a review which is going to be in a good journal okay whichever journal that you are looking for to get yourself published in make sure that you choose review articles from that particular journal itself that is clear that is the first thing which we discussed the second thing is try to select the right journal so based on the review articles based on the uh, uh, publication from where they come based on their uh, authoritativeness itself so you select the right kind of journal and third thing is build a teamwork so you have a lot of researcher oriented networks itself uh, i'm not sure if you're aware there is something called as uh, let me see if it is there in this thing yeah so all of these are for researcher oriented works okay so which will help you also to increase the same work also so you have uh, google scholar is one of the last things which i would keep okay google scholar is also good uh, whereby you will get you if it is an open access uh, publication i'll come back to open access again okay so open access publication then you will be able to do it through that uh, but then you should create an orcid id again it's free of cost okay orcid id is for connecting people if you can create an orcid id you can create a publons id which is nothing but researcher id which is given by web of science databases so i'll show you both the databases you can uh, be on researchgate again researchgate is not a source okay a lot of people confuse 
this research gate for a source. It is not like um, Google or Wikipedia or I'm sorry, it's not it's not a search engine or a source itself. Okay, like Scopus or like uh, um, any other thing. But research gate is in fact a social medium where researchers uh, share their uh, articles. Okay, and not all of the articles that are shared on research gate are authentic articles because they are being shared by the researchers themselves by the academicians by the people themselves okay it's more like a social networking place for the uh, research community researcher community am i clear or create an author profile on scopus you can create an author profile on scopus you can also use the archive.org uh, which will archive high again it's um, it is uh, a very good source uh, to um, to organize the preprints of uh, uh, research articles that have been published so archive is also a good place so you can you can choose so you you try to um, uh, be in these kind of um, uh, platforms where you can connect with people from across the world from across different disciplines cutting across disciplines cutting across um, uh, areas and you know you can you can work with them and that will help you get published in good art good journals so don't be afraid and don't be in a hurry to get yourself published okay so uh, don't work till the last minute that's what i mean okay so don't be in a hurry to get yourself published so what you need to do is you need to have a plan have a plan focus on your work which you would like to do and even if you're getting if you're going to publish one article in a year make sure that it counts rather than 10 articles or rather than five articles make sure that that one article counts make sure that that one article is published in a journal which you are really proud of okay so now uh that is enough rather than the 10 useless ones okay one article if you're going to really focus on and write it and get yourself published in a peer reviewed journal which is indexed then it is an it, 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 your job is done your you know you get points which are uh, equal to that so that is more than enough so focus on getting yourself published in such journals now how do you identify okay so the problem is like you know uh, even if it is um, uh, sometimes even if it is uh, uh, scopus journal also okay so sometimes even if it is um, uh, scopus journal also there is a peer, there is a scare of uh, it being a, a predatory journal so i'll just show it to you once and then we'll go back to it so this is okay right so we saw journal selector tool so there is edance journal selector there is uh, springer journal selector and everything they just want one thing you just need an abstract so make sure that you give an abstract okay if you give an abstract then you will get a uh, the best journal which will be suggested to you so i will go to scopus and i'll show you how you should identify a predatory journal and also side by side i'll also show you another source which is called as sky mango i hope uh, my screen is visible yes yes it's visible yes perfect okay so let's just go to scopus now so a lot of people think a lot of people think or they are uh, uh, you know they are um, um, cheated into thinking that you know what do they show they show scopus has about forty four thousand journals not only journals but also conference proceedings okay in majorly for all of the areas of uh, uh, science and social science itself now what happens is you know uh so you can see here so there is something there are two 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 indicators which are there i'll just i'll just uh, go back again to my slide because i wanted to show you something okay uh yeah so these are the basic indicators which we talk about when we talk about um, you know science indicators itself which which indicates the quality of the journal itself so one indicator is called as the journal citation reports which you can see here journal citation reports which is given out by something called as the clarivet analytics clarivet analytics is owning it right now and they bring out a source called as web of science and web of science uh, 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 a product of web of science is journal citation reports okay so journal citation reports uh, it, brings out something called as the impact factor so impact factor is actually given by journal citation reports now what is impact factor is um you can see impact factor is nothing but okay so it is the number of citations that are received in the previous years okay for the particular year like for example impact factor for this particular year of a journal or of a person or of it can be of any any of the indicators or of that particular author itself you can find out but it all depends upon the number of citations that are received so i hope you know what citations mean So you we we have references, right? 
at the end of every article. So we write and we write a paper and when we we write a paper, we follow a standard or we follow a style manual. And using that style manual, we also render the references, right? We render the references. So those references mean that, you know, when you're writing this particular research paper, you have been influenced or you have actually these papers, the are these, you have studied uh, a set of papers or you studied a set of uh, uh, articles and artic not only articles, any kind of information. And that has helped you build your research itself. So you're, it's it's a way of giving back to those uh, uh, articles. So no research can stand on its own. So you need to, th there has been some work that has been done previously, and you have to stand on the shoulders of those works that has been done. Only then your work will be accepted or rejected. So therefore, it's very important to uh, give references itself. So when you give a reference to a particular article, then the article that you have referred to will get a citation each. and this will not be done by any you know any airway publication publisher and all will not be able to do it <coughs> this will be done only by a season i mean a, a publisher who's there in the field for a very long time and that is why you have <coughs> these sources such, such as web of science okay and uh, scopus so these sources are uh, you know web of science is a separate uh, source on its own and scopus is brought out by elsevier so uh, they have access to the publisher information itself and that is why they will be able to call out all of these details so initially it was started by a person called as eugene garfield who we just saw here who spoke up who speaks about you know about what about, about um, uh, giving you know about about uh, identifying the quality indicator itself so eugene garfield was the person who actually spoke about uh, determining the quality of the article itself and determining the quality how do we determine it's not just by the number of times a uh, article has been read but the number of times the article has actually influenced some other uh, researcher to carry out his research either you agree with the research you disagree with the research or something or the other okay when you do that so that is when uh, uh, citations come in so what he did was he started an agency called as the institute of scientific information and there he started a source called as this uh, science citation index which we just saw sci okay and um, uh, this sci became very popular because you were able to call out the references and using those references you were able to tell whether a paper is more qualitative or not okay based on the number of citations it received okay so how much has it promoted how much does it promote uh, 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 research itself a particular paper research paper how much of research does it promote? Uh, promote so therefore this uh, jcr impact factor is calculated only and it is suggested only by web of science so web of science is a source which gives out the jcr impact factor and not anybody else so you have to be very sure about that okay you cannot calculate the impact factor i cannot calculate the impact factor impact factor is given out by jcr journal citation reports okay so they are the only people who are uh, capable of bringing out this jcr impact factor if there are any other impact factors which are existing okay Okay, like for example if you see these kind of names okay if you see gif global impact factor or um, ifj international impact factor or uh, T, tif okay technical impact factor or just if impact factor all these are falsified metrics and they are not true so you have to be very clear about it so you can see here this site factor they all sound very similar can you see site factor so you can see all of them have an IEF to it, but then it, it doesn't make sense. It has to be from JCR. Okay, so you have to be very sure. So when you're looking at the um, uh, impact factor, it has to be issued by journal citation reports. Is this, is this clear? This is one indicator. This is one indicator. Okay, a lot of people do not know that, uh, but please be aware of it. So JCR is one indicator and this has to be issued by Web of Science. Okay, so this is, a, in fact, this is a separate source on its own and it costs... Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not, right now. I'm not sure, but uh, a few years back, about ten years back, it was costing only three lakhs per year. So I'm not sure now. So you won't get the latest uh, journal citation report. You'll get a previous year's uh, JCR as to what's the impact factor of a particular journal. You'll be able to find out. So that is one thing. Then the other indicator, the other indicator is called as site score. So you can see here site score. I just showed you something called a site factor. Site factor is again a false one. Site score is the right one, which is issued by Scopus, okay, which is brought out by Scopus, which is what we were looking at. So we're not going into how you get to calculate it because it's again very technical. But if you want to know how it gets calculated, please let me know. I will talk to you about how it gets calculated also. <clears throat> so are we clear so, so far? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, if you have any, yeah, anything that you would like to ask, please, please do uh, feel free. I'll also do the science. 
because these two are the important journals these two are the most leading multidisciplinary journals in our country right now and uh, and india also uh, increasingly people in india subscribe to it or in fact they are very influenced by these two journals itself okay uh, i mean the, not journals these two databases okay so you can see site score here and you can see that you know cancer ca uh, cancer journal for clinicians it has a site score of 716.2 okay so this means that the number of citations that have been received look at the number of citations so this is by the uh, highest number so now let's go by the lowest number now what publishers do is okay so they apply for uh, uh, you know they apply to be included in the scopus database and they and you will have something like this okay so you'll have something that's na 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 not applicable not applicable not applicable so whenever you choose a journal and if it says scopus please go to scopus go to sources enter the title okay and check here okay check here what is it what is it see look at the site score don't look at anything else we just look at the site score okay uh, i hope i hope i'm clear okay please let me know if you're not clear <clears throat> Just look at the site score and see what it says. If it says NA, if it says NA, that means that it has not been archived. It's not applicable. It's not been archived. I mean, it's not added on to the uh, database yet. So and if it, they're just going to show you this particular page and if the site score comes as NA, please do not choose but that particular journal. Anytime it can be removed from the list itself. Anytime this can be removed from the list. So you can see here all conferences and all that are there. So, so it says NA means it has not yet been added to the there is no site score that means you can anytime it can you can get removed from this list right is it clear even if the site score is 0 0.01 okay even if the score is 0 0.01 you can choose it but don't choose a na1 okay people is it clear <coughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am i'll show you yeah even if it is 0, 0.0 okay and they have some kind of thing which has been said yes you can choose this journal but don't choose a journal which says na okay that means that it has not been added anytime it can be dropped out that list will go out okay anytime it can be dropped out please do not choose that journal itself so this is this is one of the indicators as to how you can choose so even if it is 0.0 you can choose it something some number should be there site score shouldn't be na okay so this is as far as scopus is concerned because scopus there are chances that some uh predatory journals or some journals you know by you know they they they, they have just started and they want to get included so they may get included into the scopus uh, uh author i mean the sources list okay they may get included in the sources list, sources list but they won't be there added on to the database itself since site score not is not been given so anytime it can be stopped so therefore do not include it <clears throat> The other uh, uh, source which you can look for is Web of Science, of course, Web of Science, Web of Science. So we have access to Web of Science at the University of Madras, even Scopus we have access to now. So I'm not going through my infed, uh, I mean, my remote access, so that, uh, otherwise I'd be able to go in and show you, but I think, right. So I'll just get into Web of Science and show you what are the sources which are available. Okay, uh, Clarivate, you can be 100% sure, you can close your and you can be sure that uh, everything that is there in Clarivate Master Journal list, okay, it is all, it's all, you know, they have a very, very tough procedure, Clarivate Analytics, and all of them are, uh, once it is included in the uh, uh, Web of Science uh, database, then uh, it's very rarely removed unless the journal has been stopped or something like that. It is very rarely removed. So the journal will, it will, it will uh, always be there. So they have a very uh, closed collection, about 20,000 or, or something like that. Okay. So you can, uh, you know, you can search for the journal itself. You can even click on the products and you can see the master journal. This master journal list is free. So you can click on that and you can see, like I told you, the journal citation reports, it's cost, it's not a free one. So you will not be able to, we will not be able to search for it. But once you know the title of the journal, you can just go to Google and search on the title of the journal itself, the journal journal page itself will have the journal citation reports. But make sure that the impact factor comes from JCR. Okay, the impact factor should be issued by JCR and not by anybody else. Right. So another one, which is you know these are these two are uh, premium lists. Okay, another one is Skymago um, uh, list, which is again brought out by um, uh, you know it, it is it is related to Scopus. Okay, and uh, you can you can put in the name of the journal, and you will be able to get a journal ranking. You'll be able to get a journal ranking, and you'll also know if this journal is available on Scopus or not. So do you have any journal like that? National Journal of of um, 
search. I don't remember I had some. I searched for something. I mean, a, a few. Journal of International Research. I mean, I, I'm not sure. There are so many journals now which come with research name title. Right? Journal of International Research, Journal of This, That, and all that. So you can just search. You can search. Give the exact title. I have not given an exact title. Just simply type, uh, typing it. You can see. So who's the... See, for example, Research International. So you can see the subject area, category. You can see the publisher, which is very important. And you will also get to see the H index. Okay? This H index is also actually... Um, <clears throat> um, uh, it was calculated, it was brought out by a physicist named as uh, George Rich, and uh, um, it, uh, you know, it was, um, uh, it, it, initially it was calculated using the number of uh, 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 citations that are being received by a particular uh, uh, author, okay, it was ma mainly to class to, to qualify an author's work, okay, it was, it was to uh, identify, you know, not, not only based on the, no the number of citations that he receives, but also the number of publications that he makes. So he was trying to balance it out. Okay, so the H index is more of a balancing act between the citations received as well as the number of papers that are being uh, produced. Like, for example, if, if one author uh, uh, publishes one paper and that paper has about 100 citations, but he has only published one paper in his life and that paper has 100 citations, then his uh, citation, his impact fact or his H index will only be one. His, his uh, H index will only be one. Okay, his H index will only be one. So it is like it's a way of uh, you know balancing out the consistency in the performance itself. So that is what H index is all about. So you can see the ISS numbers there, the type, the coverage. Okay, so everything everything will be available in this particular uh, um, uh, site itself. Okay, what is the citation? Uh, chances how how can you expect citations in this particular journal so all of that will be available in this particular site so this is sky Mago. so you can search here also before you choose your journal so the first important step before you you know you're going to uh, publish your article before you start writing your article in fact is to choose the right journal to choose the right journal so uh, you can make use of the journal selector tools okay you can uh, uh, zero in on the uh, literature review where you're going to carry out your review of literature those those journals and then you can search these three um, databases i mean these three databases apart from the ugc care list database also it's to zero in or or to focus on which journal that you would like to choose okay is that clear regarding that regarding choosing the journal very clear very clear Okay, excellent. So now, uh, before we go into plagiarism, I just wanted to talk to you about the Coke list. One second, let me just see. I, I hadn't put up this. This is, yeah, Beads list. Uh, I'll just show you Beads list also. So there's also this Beals list of predatory journals. You can go there and you can choose. You can look in if your journal is uh, is listed in this particular list. Okay, Beals list. You can go to Beale's list of potential predatory journals. And Beale's list also has a, you know, um, uh, uh, what do you say? Mm. A criteria, okay, a criteria, which you can just come here. You can see this. So retraction watch. So what, what do you mean by retraction watch? Retraction watch is, you know, sometimes uh, journals uh, publish a particular uh, article and then, uh, you know, good journals, like from example, example Elsevier journals or you know uh, 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 a very renowned journal okay they publish the article and then they come to know and later on they come to know that this is a duplicated article this was already published somewhere else or it is it was it was you know it was sent at the same time to two different journals and one of them published it earlier and the other one published it a few months later so then what happens is uh, uh, once they come to know about that they try to retract that particular journal back or if they find that there was some kind of an unethical practice or if there is some kind of a, a, a predatory material that is being found okay so then they try to remove it back okay so that is called as retraction retraction watch if your retract if your journal article is going to be retracted then it is then it will not be counted now the trouble is that retraction can be done only in the um, in accomplished journals i mean in peer reviewed journals they can retract your journal and they can say that you know you, you no sorry your journal was not up to our mark and we are removing this journal from the uh, sorry uh, we are removing this article from our journal okay they can say that but if you have got published by mistake also if you have got published in a predatory journal and you wish to retract your article from that predatory journal that is not possible so once 
so once you um, uh, uh, once it happens then uh, it's not possible to retract your article itself uh, is it is it fine yeah ma'am what do you what do you mean by predatory journal can you just explain once again ma'am okay what you mean by predatory journal predatory journals is like you know um okay i'll show you uh my ppt so a journal which usually doesn't have any kind of a uh, what do you say if it doesn't have any kind of um uh, 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 review process okay a review process okay if it is uh, if it doesn't have a review process and if it is on the open access publication um, without a review process if you don't have um, uh, you know whatever you give whatever you have submitted okay without any kind of a questioning without any kind of uh, uh, editorial uh, process at all if it just gets published as it is okay as it is and if you are going to be um, um, uh, paying some kind of a uh, initial you know some kind of a small amount of money or something like that to get yourself published um, or if you are going to do some kind of a paid work okay it's not your work but you have paid somebody else to do that particular work so predatory in fact comes under all of these things basically predatory journals are duplicated uh, duplicated journals journal articles which have not been uh, 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 which have not been through a, a, a kind of a what do you say Mm. editorial process <clears throat> which do not have any kind of an authority who determines the authority of the uh, of whatever you have published so that comes under a predatory journalist itself okay i hope i'm clear did you get the answer for it yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you ma'am and they also uh, push you to like you know they'll tell you that you know for example uh, they'll say that you know uh, you, you need to get yourself published so please choose our journal get yourself published as soon as possible okay so like that they'll try to keep on pushing you they'll ask you to they're they're not um, they're not true journals okay they are kind of deceptive in nature <clears throat> and they try to deceive the researchers that uh, their research work is uh, is a uh, is a uh, good work okay sorry uh is a good work and it uh, deserves uh, and it um, um i'm sorry i'm sorry people i'm just getting this fact here my daughter came in yeah okay where were we we were talking about predatory journals yes so predatory journals and predatory publishers basically what they do is they don't uh, uh, they don't tell the uh, author what is wrong with their publication see whenever we do some work we need to have some questions have to be asked some questions have to be asked somebody can tell you that you know you've missed out uh, one of the uh, pioneer papers in this or somebody can go through your work and say that okay this is a good work this you are adding on something to the to the to the uh, existing literature itself so some something happens like that so if there is no kind of conversation nobody is reviewing your article nobody is reading uh, uh, your work okay then what's what's the point of just getting published so that is what predatory journals do predatory journals actually try to focus on the 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 um uh the anxiety of the researchers the anxiety of the researchers to get themselves published somewhere or the other so they say they they come here and they tell you that you know okay you want to get published i am bringing out a journal come on You, you you know you put in some money and then let's all publish we all of our work will be published without any kind of a review itself so we don't why do why should we go to him why should we go to web of science why should we go to scopus who is he to tell me what what my work is all about so i know what my work is all about my work is an original work so all that that is all about predatory journals so they also what happens is unfortunately because you pay for the work and you know you get it published so therefore predatory journals mostly are on open access so unfortunately it also belittles the open access journal itself so there is a movement okay there is there is a movement among researchers among academicians where they feel feel that science should not be behind any kind of a, uh, a, a paywall it shouldn't be paywalled like for example scopus or or web of science it's a hugely you know Uh, uh, commercial uh, resource okay it's a very very hugely commercial resource and uh, uh, not every agency not every organization or institution can have access to that and you cannot even get yourself published that so they believe in making research open access now open access uh, means that it will be on it will be on a platform that which is free for everybody and everybody can have access to the uh, uh, to the articles itself now what happens is when it when you bring something on open access then how do you pay or how do you um, uh, how do you um, uh, sustain the you know uh, the 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 uh, the editors or the publication process itself you know 
somebody has to maintain a database somebody has to feed the publishers also right so how do you maintain maintain when open access happens so what happens is that is why money is pumped into research so what happens is uh, in open access the author bears uh, something called as the article processing charge the apc so this is what uh, harini was asking about whether paid is a myth or uh, is not a myth, uh, reality paid is uh, this is not paid this is for bringing out your research on the open access where you as an author you don't pay it okay you don't pay for it but you um, the, res the, the research agency or the institution or the organization for whom you are conducting research essentially they should pay, pay, pay for it your your research uh, funding should pay for it okay so that is called as the article processing fee so you have some very popular um, journals there is like nature nature is on open access now uh, you have plos there's plos plus one okay public library of open sciences okay so that is also on open access so all of these things they they charge something called as the apc or the article processing charge okay article processing charge from the authors itself so author have to pay that amount of fee it may uh, it, it does uh, uh, range between you know any anywhere between uh, a few thousands to lakhs also so it does range between that okay depending upon the type of journal and depending upon the impact factor of the journal and all that because they need to pay for the publications and they need to pay for a for their editors and all that i hope you can understand it right Yes, we can have something understand. called as a gold open access. There's something called as green open access. There's something called as hybrid open access. So all these are various ways in which the open access itself can be available. Sometimes you have something called the <coughs> institutional repository. So you publish and uh, and it is made open access only for the institutional repository. Okay, only for the people who in that particular institution itself. So that that is something which happens. Green open access. Then you pay the entire fee and bring it out on the gold open access also, where everybody across the world they. They, they are uh, ready to they, 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 they'll be able to uh, particular article itself. so this is different from predatory so not every time somebody is asking you to pay okay it becomes predatory but this is like you're not getting published just by paying okay you are getting published you're 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 paying to get your article reviewed by some of the best can you understand me so for example am i am i clear people Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just give you an example. You can just give me an example of what you would like to search on web of sites. So we can search and we can just look at it, have a look at it. And show you open access also, what we mean by that. So there are a lot of open access sources. Anybody can just tell something or shall we say, uh, what was it? Digital media. Yeah. Digital media. Digital media uh, is very... <clears throat> very broad um, somewhere digital media in management or in marketing or something else. digital media through linkedin yeah okay in marketing okay. <clears throat> so uh, so you can see this so you can see here okay so you can see here three of the filters which are there one is a review article okay which means review articles means basically uh they are uh we're just talking about a literature review article i mean you know this, this is also a great thing okay you can you can do a lot of review articles review articles means you need to just search uh you know uh those kind of papers where uh where uh, a lot lot of um um uh, you know, bring in the collect, collect I mean, bring in the uh, uh, same area papers and then work on those papers. So that will be a review article. Okay, early access is just before, and then you have open access. Open access is on 69 only are available for this. So 69 only on open access. <clears throat> I'll remove the review article. So open access, we have about 930, which is a very good sign. Okay, so 930 articles are on open access in web of sites. That means so many people are actually ready to, uh, you know, they pay for it and they bring it out on the open access. Now, what happens when it is on open access is that you get a lot of visibility. A lot of people are, are, are able to see the articles. Full text of the article is made free. Okay, it's made free. And uh, and when people are able to view, when there is visibility of that particular article, that means there is increased uh, uh, citation because a lot of people will be able to read that article. And when they read the article, they'll be able to use it for their work or they'll, they'll be inspired by it. They'll refer it. And when they refer it, their number of citations will also grow. So that's the funda behind the open access itself. And that's also one of the basic 
uh, one liners behind why you should get yourself published in a recognized journal okay only when you get yourself published in a recognized journal you will get better visibility and when you get better visibility visibility in that particular field itself then it means that a lot of people will be reading your paper and when a lot of people read your paper then they'll also be inspired by that paper and they will be able to quote or they'll be able to refer your paper in their works also so that is why you need to get yourself published in a recognized journal not for any other reason okay is that clear yes ma'am right right so i think now we will move ahead to plagiarism right <clears throat> so we have seen as to what we mean by uh, how do we select journals and uh, or what are the ways in which we should select journals and how do we now clear steer clear of plagiarism. Of course, all of you know what plagiarism is all about. Plagiarism is nothing but taking somebody else's work and uh, passing it as your own. Okay, so it can be even if you're going to translate it for somebody else's work or if you're going to use it, uh, if you forget to even quote somebody's work. Okay, so that also can mean plagiarism. So plagiarism is, uh, uh, is very uh, predominant in uh, India okay uh, and it is um, uh, there's no particular reason as to why uh, basically I think I would like to uh, you know I would like to uh, tell that the reason is that you know we are, we are taught like that from our childhood we don't believe in our in ourselves we are taught to doubt ourselves very often we are a, we are a very humble set of people okay who think that what we do is not right and what others do is much better than what we do so uh, we are not very confident about ourselves, and that is one of the reasons why people plagiarize and people try to uh, uh, to copy something from uh, from what others have done and try to try to pass it off as their own work itself. Next thing is you don't know you don't know where to quote, how to quote, how do you paraphrase, how do you uh, uh, write something. So that is also uh, one of the reasons uh, you know which which causes plagiarism. So there's not much enough skill. You're not skilled enough to uh, to write. You know, like I told you earlier itself, uh, English is not our nascent language. It is not our language in which we uh, uh, you know converse in our day to day lives. It is it's it's a foreign language, and therefore it becomes difficult for us to. Uh, to write in the exact way. So we feel that what has been written, what has been expressed by somebody else is much better. And we try to copy and do a kind of a patchwork. Okay, so that is why uh, generally plagiarism happens. Plagiarism can be of various types, direct, mosaic, self. Self plagiarism is when you keep quoting your work itself. Accidentally is by mistake, but still it, it does uh, resort to plagiarism only. So when you directly copy the exact sentences, okay, then it is direct plagiarism. Mosaic is when you copy here and there or try to change the synonym so that becomes mosaic plagiarism <clears throat> of course the effects are it is unlawful it's unethical it questions the academic integrity of the person uh, the quality of knowledge that the person possesses and it it kind of uh, you know as a academician or as a researcher it, it raises a huge question mark on your personality on the kind of work that you do and and um, it, it, it it spoils your reputation itself so therefore it's not really good and in, in India, plagiarism is governed under uh, the Copyright Act in, of 1957 under three sections. Section 57. Again, we don't have a special act for plagiarism uh, or for, uh, you know, to overcome plagiarism also. But these are the acts that are being used. One is to protect the rights, which is Section 57, which protects the rights of the author itself, author himself. Uh, Section 63 and 63A uh, talk about the uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> the. Uh, punishments okay which is not again a major thing okay so uh this like i told you 50, 57 provides the author the right the right to claim authorship to their work to their work uh, I'm, not, I'm not going deeper into it i'll try to show you some of the tools of plagiarism itself okay and section 63 like i told you it, it talks about the punishment for the offense okay and again again <clears throat> if it is not for the for a uh, monetary benefit or if it is not for any kind of form um, it doesn't cause any uh, uh you know major harm okay uh, then it, it it can be written off also like and, and you know when you're talking about plagiarism in uh, in academic setup it it really doesn't do any harm to anybody as okay it doesn't do any major harm to anybody only thing is somebody tries to uh, uh, get a, a, a maybe a next next level promotion or something like that that's all it doesn't harm anybody so therefore they don't take it very seriously Again, it's a very, very, very nominal amount, one to two lakhs, and and you know you won't have a, a, a particular. If you don't, if you don't give that money, then you'll have to stay in jail. So it's not, it's not really treated as a huge offense in India, as in okay, plagiarism. But UGC has a stringent policy on uh, on plagiarism. 
but there are some exclusions also like uh, for example all the quoted works okay all quoted works uh, if there is a permission that has been given for the quoted works and that can be accepted like for example if you are going to do um, uh, in languages okay in languages then you need to quote a particular uh, area i mean you need to quote a particular paragraph and then talk about that particular paragraph or talk about a particular uh, <clears throat> line or something like that from an original text then of course yes it is it is uh, excluded same way if you're going to talk about some generic terms like in in sciences in sciences or in mathematics you're talking about certain equations or certain generic terms which are very very common okay so those things can be excluded okay so all those things can be excluded all of the uh, references the bibliographies the the front matter the end matter so all those things also will be excluded uh, uh, based on their similarity itself so those can be excluded so it's not just it's not a very hard course so all these things will be excluded what we will talk about when we talk about plagiarism is it shouldn't be there in your in your um, uh, data collection part of it it shouldn't be there in your data analysis part of it it shouldn't be there in your discussion part of it so that is the most important area where your plagiarism your plagiarism shouldn't be there should not be there and of course when you write the review also i have seen uh, a thesis which was submitted where people where a person actually you know they what they did was they uh, put the entire they did the entire review uh, chapter in quotes entire review chapter was in quotes because once it's in quotes then you know it's exempted from plagiarism automatically so the entire review part uh, review part was in quote okay and uh, the but then the external examiner saw it and he said that no this is not done so he returned back the thesis saying that you'll have to rewrite it and resubmit it okay so maybe you can cheat the uh, system but then you cannot cheat the people okay so that's not that's not uh, a right way of doing it <clears throat> so what are the levels of plagiarism and penalties according to the university grants commission so it's it's available on, again on the ugc website so you can also go up and look there uh, anyway if it is 0% level 0 is when you have similarities up to 10% which is like you know okay it's acceptable up to 10% is acceptable up to between 10 to 40% uh, then the student will be asked to submit a revised script but <clears throat> again it all depends from you from university to university as to how the university prefers to adopt these rules i think at the university of madras it's uh, 20% is the acceptable level so 20 to 40 you will have to you have a time period within which you can revise it and uh, above uh, 40 to 60 you, will, you you know the student will be debarred okay from submitting a revised script for a period of one year and similarity is above 60% then the student registration for the program will be cancelled okay again there are a uh, lot of loopholes which are there and people do uh, uh, you know discuss with people uh, and you know they do use exemptions and all that and they do do it but then you uh, um, it's 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 good that you are aware of the level of plagiarism and then work according to that but uh, the same things for the um, uh, for the faculty for the <clears throat> academic professionals up to 10% it's accepted especially if it is found to be in a article in a journal article uh, if there is a similarity of about 40 to 60% then you are asked to withdraw the manuscript deny one annual increment and will not be an allow will not be allowed to supervise any masters or mphil or phd student for a period of 2 years same way similarities above 60% will be asked to withdraw the manuscript shall be denied a right to two successive annual increments and will not be allowed to be a supervisor for any masters and mphil degree for next 3 years so these are the penalties right so uh, how do we do a plagiarism check so before we go into this okay let's just look at certain plagiarism uh, tools which are available some of the free tools which i'll talk to you about okay uh, not only for plagiarism but also for i'm sure you must have heard about grammarly right yes ma'am yeah actually edance was one of the first one of the first to bring out a, a writing tool okay an author uh, help tool edance brought out something called as the author help tool initially in the beginning itself in 2000 uh, 2010 or 10 or 11 or something like that they brought out a, a very good tool okay a, a, along with the journal selector tool the journal selector tool came later but the first tool which came was uh, help with the editing with the english editing and all that and then now you have grammarly i'm sure all of you are aware of grammarly so i'll show you another one which is called as quillbot uh, have you heard of quillbot quillbot is also just like uh, grammarly again uh, you know it's it's a it's a good tool whereby you can you, you know it's for paraphrasing so like i told you we are not good in english okay so let's uh, if we need any help then you can you know you can sub, you can use the uh, like for example i'll just show you what it does okay so 
I'm just going to copy this. Okay, and I'm going to write it here. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, and I'm going to say paraphrase. So it will paraphrase the same thing and it will give it to me. But but please do use your common sense also. Okay, this, this is just a free tool which I'm going to show you. The same thing can be done with Grammarly also for free also. You can uh, uh, do it and you can even... Uh, um, you can even um, um, what do you call it? You can even um, you can even um, attach it with the word document and all that, and you know use it as a plugin. Sorry, yeah, the right word plugin, and then you can make use of it. But then have some kind of a, a reading. Just don't copy this and paste it. So you should understand that every plagiarism checking software it is just a software. It is a it is a it is based on some. Uh, it's based on an algorithm which checks for um, all of these items that are appearing in a sentence in a particular um, in a string together if all of these words appear together in a string then it, it will pull out and it will show you but if it doesn't appear together in a string then it won't show so you have to have some kind of a skill in uh, writing rewriting a particular sentence itself which of course comes with time it is not an easy task to do immediately so you have to keep writing 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 and then you know, uh, you will get it right one day. And believe me, once you get yourself published in a recognized journal, then that will just become a habit. So the first step is always the hardest. The first step, the first step of getting published in a good journal is the hardest step. But take your time and put your foot down and get into that step. Okay, if you're not able to do it alone, then form a team. Do it together as a team. Split your work and do the work together so that, you know, you will be able to get yourself published. And once you get yourself published, then the rest of the things will fall easy and it will become a habit. So you just need to do the first step correctly. So don't just go by it as it is. Okay, so you can you can rewrite it again. You can rewrite, you know, or try to build, break the sentences, build two sentences together, okay, or uh, build a big sentence into, uh, you know, into two sentences. So do all these things, you know, uh, try to rewrite it as much as possible. So this is using Quillbot, which you can do. Uh, then there is... Um, uh, for, you know, for over the desk checking, okay. Now, see, uh, I, I strongly feel that you will not need a plagiarism checker if you know what you are doing if you know what you're working on you will really not need and there's only one place where you really need to do a, a a plagiarism check and that will be mostly in your chapter one and chapter two or if you're going to write a paper then it'll be your introduction part and your review part okay because the rest of it you're going to write on your own okay the whether it's going to be the methods or whether it's going to be your data analysis you're going to write on your own so that doesn't that shouldn't require for plagiarism check but anyway if you're going to use uh, uh plagiarism checking tools so that there are a few of them which are free and i'll just uh, just show you a few of them copy leaks okay uh, then you have uh, dupli checker you have plagiarisma i just okay beans okay yeah i have to show you beans just also so i'll just show you this plagiarisma or plagiarism checker is there, plagiarism is there. All these are free tools. Okay, all these are free tools. Don't upload anything. You don't have to upload anything. You can, what you can do is see, uh, all this is advertisement. Okay, so you can see here there is a small box. So I'm just going to click on the box and I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to do a search. Okay, so do do not choose the file and upload it. Okay, you can do check check the web, uh, plagiarism via the web URL if you are looking for a web check, web, I mean, web website itself so i'm not a robo and check plagiarism and it will bring out okay so you can see dupli checker is just a normal tool okay it's not a very great tool not like Turnitin or uh, uh, any other software which exists okay this is a normal tool which is there so it will it will show show us okay copy leaks again you'll have to register okay i'll show it to you uh, there is a plagiarism then there is um uh what was the other one um where that's quick your text okay Okay, Copyleaks, you'll have to log in uh, to do a check, but Copyleaks, it also works across, uh, uh, what do you say, it also works across, um, uh, 
languages. So there are a lot of languages which are also covered in QTEC. Okay. So the QTEXT and uh, CopyLeaks. Okay, CopyLeaks also. So both of them. And they can also, it can also be, um, uh, uh, you know, you can you can also use it with a, a learning management software. So if you have a MOOC or something like that, which you which you would like to choose, you can also use that. Yeah. Let's see, duplicate checker if it has done. Ah, okay, so you can see here, twenty percent still it shows unique. In fact, we all of it we have copied from web from uh, Wikipedia, but it says eighty percent is plagiarized. So this donut, you can see here. So this donut uh, does a check, and it says eighty percent of it is plagiarized, and twenty percent is unique. Okay, so that's what duplicate checker says. Okay, and it shows from where. So not only from. <coughs> Okay, so 67% is from, from uh, Web of Science, okay, from Wikipedia also. And then there's another some another place, which is another journal, uh, journal article where they have also talk, spoken about uh, this particular thing. So they have it, okay. And you can even uh, take the results from this particular page. Okay, so this is duplicate checker. Uh, it all talks, It this is all on the free platform. So the free platform, whatever is on the, whichever web crawler they have or wherever they're able to search on the uh, easily, that is what they will, uh, that is what the free checkers will do. They will not be able to perform a very, um, what do you say, a, a comprehensive uh, search, but it will be limited. It's definitely limited for the checker and uh, any of these free platforms compared to Turnitin and uh, uh, Urkun is also limited, in fact. Uh, compared to Turnitin, Turnitin is the best. Uh, Authenticate is the next, next best, okay, which is mostly used in the uh, engineering colleges. Uh, you have Authenticate. And what is used across uh, uh, other universities, other popular universities, is Turnitin. And most of the publishers also use this software called as Turnitin. I'm sure you are aware of Turnitin. Right? Let me just see if I have it. If I have it, then maybe I can just show it to you. Not here. The plagiarism free ones itself, I'll be having it. Let me just check. Okay. So this is, yeah, these are some of the tools which are there. So these are all free of charge. Okay, all of them are free of charge. Um, Duplicate checker, copy leaks, paper rater. Okay, so you can do, again, all, most of these tools have all of these three things built in together. They have a grammar check, they have a vocabulary check, and also a plagiarism checker. Um, plagiarism, again, 192, 190 languages supported. So other languages also you can check, okay, if you have it. Plagiarism Checker X. This is this is a good one. It will also allow you to you can download it and have it in, on your desktop, and uh, it'll allow it'll give you a report. It'll generate a report also. Again, you should be able to identify which is the part which you want to you know, which you want to check. So as researchers, we know what is it that we are uh, uh, looking for, or we know what is it that we are uh, missing, okay, where where our plagiarism will be more. So we know it, right, right? When we write a paper, we do know where our uh, plagiarism will be more, which is a place where we have uh, <clears throat> searched for. So you need to be truthful to yourself and search in those kind of areas for plagiarism checking itself. Plagium, then you have plaque scan, then you have plaque tracker, you have quick text, okay, you have wiper. So all of these are very uh, uh, free tools which are available for plagiarism checking itself. Right. So, uh, if, you know, uh, so how do you sell your paper? So it's very important that you sell your paper. Okay, so I've written that here. Yeah. So you have to sell your paper to the editor itself. So like I told you, first thing that you do is you have to identify your journal you identify your journal and every journal page will have something like you know uh, uh, instructions to the authors okay submit your manuscript instructions to the authors please go through that read those instructions very carefully and um, you know do not do multiple you know public multiple submissions multiple submissions in the sense that don't send the same paper to two different journals now what happens is ultimately there'll be the same uh, you know even if you send it to two different journals the reviewer might be the same person 
okay then everyone might be the same person so they might come to know and same thing what happens sometimes what happens is you know you send it to one particular journal in their format and then you don't bother to reformat it back according to the second journal and then you just you know once you're rejected you send it back same way to the other journal also so then they'll know that you have sent it to this particular journal because the publishers are aware trust me they're aware they know okay which is the style manual that is followed in each of the journals itself okay so therefore uh, uh, it's very important that uh, you you um, uh, take in you know, or or you 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 pay attention to the small details especially when you want yourself to be published in a high impact factor journal okay like i told you high impact factor journal means you're talking about above science journals okay so if you want to get yourself published in a journal that has high citation rates that has uh, uh, a good chance or a good visibility itself so then it's very important that you spend some time okay in selling or in in writing to the editor okay so don't, just don't say hi please find attached okay so please be a very very cordial and you know uh, sometimes i do find uh, the students especially do that you know even when they submit assignments to us there won't be anything that's just the attachment the assignment will come to you right have you all seen that i mean you know there won't be a subject there won't be anything inside just submission sub, that just the assignment will come and sometimes they'll just say hi and submit the assignment okay there won't be anything else so don't don't do that okay get get uh, accustomed to them um, um, <clears throat> address them by their name address them I mean, uh, address them by their uh, 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 by whatever uh, position they are in so address them like that and write to them saying that you know you would like to get yourself published or you would like to get associated with that particular journal itself and you would like for them to publish and you have been inspired by that particular journal by the articles in that journal and all that so talk to them and and definitely don't make any mistake in the name of the journal or in the editor's name okay so make sure you double check and do cross check and do all these things because it 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 shows that you have put in effort to get yourself published in this particular journal itself so these small things matter it can trump you trump you know it can it can uh, uh, give you the trump card in getting yourself published because it's a cutthroat competition out, outside okay when it comes to journal publications it is not very easy to get published in all of these journals especially with uh, you know the international community and the national standards that have been focusing on high impact factor and uh, and uh, you know scopus uh, uh, site score and all those things so when you're focusing on that and you also want to be a part of that bandwagon so it's important that you um, you you know you you, you to tailor make your uh, your uh, publication to suit the needs of the uh, people itself and write a very good abstract and a good abstract is something that is going to sell your paper so you know when you're writing an abstract make sure that you include the right things don't give away your findings but make them curious enough make them inquisitive enough to uh, want to read your paper to want to read your paper talk about your methods talk about your um, your find just give a gist of the findings not everything about the findings talk about uh, you know how you 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 reached this particular uh, you know this arrived at this particular problem and all those things okay so talk about that don't be very repetitive about your work itself so be very careful when you're talking when you're writing your abstract okay and and um, always um, uh, put in or pitch in something new that you have added on you know what what is not been what what has not been done by somebody uh, by others okay what is a new thing that you have found or what is a new thing that you have what is the innovative uh, finding of your uh, research okay so try to give a kind of a gist of that into your abstract itself so that it makes the editor or the reader curious to read your paper everything matters right from your title to how you write it or everything matters most of us you know most of the time what i find in indian uh, journals is the title is very ambiguous okay you try to include a lot of we try to you know include a lot of jargons we think that once you put in a lot of jargons it will become very attractive no the moment people understand or relate to the title that is what makes it makes it relatable so try to all this comes to your mind all this you'll be able to understand when you do a good review of literature okay so keep it simple at the same time make sure that you use the right kind of jargons at the right places not full of jargons okay and when you do the when you're when you're done with your analysis part of it make sure that you come up with a discussion and an inference part okay make sure that you write a, 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 a sorry um, uh, do the inference part of it inference means you're just talking about the findings whatever okay like uh, i did this study this was a finding i did this study this was a finding don't finish your paper with the findings what is more important is the discussion the interpretation why this finding 
why did this happen why did that happen what was the reason so that why you have to answer that why or you have to discuss that why based on your review related with the review of your literature and try to uh, talk about why this happened like for example you know in my paper uh, when i was doing uh, there was you know mine was on scientific productivity of the you know mapping the world scientific product productive literature. So I uh, uh, found that, you know, Japan was one of the leading countries in scientific productivity and 10 years later, it slumped down. So wh what is the reason that, you know, something that was in a leading position about 15 years back, what happened after 15 years that they that they were falling down or they were going down the graph? What was the reason? You know, uh, so uh, my another department, she told me that, you know, no, you have to find a, a reason as to why. Yeah, it has fallen down. Good. But how do you how do you justify it? What is the reason behind this, you know, this uh, great fall for a developed nation? Why did this happen? And then uh, and China's rise. OK, so then I found a newspaper article uh, talking about uh, about, uh, you know, degrading uh, research in Japan, which was attributed to the degrading population, youth population in Japan itself. OK, or the number of <clears throat> Uh, the number of researchers, young researchers in the country had gone down. And that was related to the research output itself. So this, this is something which is very interesting. Okay, So you go cut across the barriers and try to relate it to the society, relate it to how your work can actually provide back to the society itself. So And, and how you can enrich the journal because of your research. So it's something like that. You will have to bring, it, bring all of these in your abstract, which makes it very interesting. Again, don't give too much away in the abstract. So when you do that, then the editors will get become interested and they will be they will want to read more about this. Remember, you are facing a huge competition. It is not an easy uh, path. It is a difficult path. So there is a competition which is there and you're not you're, you're going to take it on the right way and not in through any other uh, um, way. OK, so trust in yourself and make sure that you present your work in the uh, 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 best manner. Mostly when you submit your manuscript, it will be uh, online. So make sure that you follow the rules, read the rules, stick to those rules. If they are talking about, you know, bringing it out in a particular style manual, using a particular style manual, make sure you have those uh, uh, tools, okay, like you have EndNote or you have a uh, reference manager tool like uh, Zotero or uh, Mendeley. Okay, so make use of those tools so that you will be able to change your references according to the that which has been specified in that particular uh, journal itself so what do they want how do they want your work to be uh, to be you know to be uh, presented okay the references to be presented so do it in that particular manner what Whatever they tell you, you make sure you adhere to that, adhere to that, and make sure that your references do carry a few of the references from their mm -hmm. journal itself. So that, that also helps a lot. <clears throat> and if there is a rejection, okay, if there mostly there will be rejections in the and the rejections will be basically because of these reasons. Okay. One is, you know, if it doesn't fall under the scope and coverage of the journal. See, this is a huge myth. The scope and coverage of the journal is a very huge myth. I think that any article can be. Uh, tweaked okay to uh, meet uh, the scope and coverage of a journal itself so you need to you need to know what to present or how to highlight your article okay what is the thing that you would like to highlight according to the policy document of that particular journal itself so you need to identify that um, if it is under review at another journal, this is something which people frown at. Okay, so if you have already sent it somewhere else, then wait for the rejection from there before you send it to another place. Uh, if the writing is incomprehensible, you know, you're talking about something now, then something else, and there's no flow of literature, there's no flow of style of writing, so that again is uh, is not acceptable okay and if you're doing self citations you know you're just citing some uh, article without a relationship to that particular uh, work which is there which you're talking about so that again that also uh, immediately they will reject it okay if the, if the references are not found in place immediate rejection okay that is if it doesn't conform to the writing style that's the first thing in fact okay so because like i told you people don't have time so they're not going to look at your uh, 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 you know, they're not going to read your abstract and all if it is not going to be adhering to their style. So first thing is make sure that it adheres to the style because that's the first step where they try to remove it. And only finally, you know, they go to the findings or the, the results and discussion and all that. Uh, yeah, if you are not presenting it properly, okay, you have one chart here, one chart there. If it's not related properly, you have not, you have not, uh, uh, you know, you've, you've talked, you're talking about table uh, three and you have table six over 
over there. Okay, so all these things. So give some time when you write the paper and when you're sending it to an accomplished journal, a peer reviewed journal, make sure that you that you you know that that it is presented very neatly as how they require yeah what to do most important thing don't lose hope don't lose hope be be hopeful okay even if you're rejected make sure that you make it a make make a go another time if they give you some suggestions then be magnanimous enough to accept the suggestions don't feel like you know oh, who are they to tell me what i should do who are they to tell me that i should include this or do it this way no lower your lower your ego go back again at it uh, ask them what is wrong and why it's not accepted and uh, you know i had i, I attended a, a, a conference by the niscare people okay who are in charge of the iss and numbers okay so and uh, there was one very senior uh, uh, colleague and uh, she uh, she you know she very very confidently she stood up and she asked okay that you know my paper i have sent my paper to your journals which you bring out you know um, so many journals are there and and nine papers i sent and all my nine papers were rejected Okay, and that person who was giving the uh, talk was uh, a very, very, he was in a very good mood and he immediately recognized who she was. Okay, and he said that, you know, your papers were rejected because of these, these, these reasons. One of the reasons was self-citation. One of the reasons was, you know, um, there was no relationship. All of them, most of them were because of references. They missed out a core paper. Or one of the reasons was that the papers which they cited or which was there in the reference had no connection with whatso whatsoever with the content inside. Okay, another reason was that uh, the paper that they submitted they had already submitted to some other journal and they did not even bother to uh, to work on that to you know to rework on that particular paper. Uh, <clears throat> adhering to the rules of the other journal to which whom they sent so like that and she was very she she asked such a question okay because she was open to asking such a question she, you know if i was there probably i would have died of embarrassment but she asked that question nine times rejection <laughs> i would have felt very bad but she was you know you you have to be like that okay so you your focus is to get yourself published so, so you have to be like that and you have to make sure that you somehow or the other uh, try and get yourself published and there is no shortcut to it okay do not adopt any shortcut because it will come back to bite you trust me it will come back okay so make sure that you you do it the right way the first time you do it even though you are going to work double time or three times or four times or whatever it is you work for a lot of time but still you do it the right way yes so i'm almost done with the session today so a bad a day of yeah what i would like to finish off is with is that a day of bad writing is always better than a day of no writing so it's it doesn't matter whether you have done well or you have not done well but it's always about whether you have written something or the other so we don't get it right in the first uh, chance itself um we need time accept it and do it again so i think i'd like to stop here since if you have we've got some time thank you thank you so much sir. Thank you, Mamali Shri, ma'am. Thank you for sticking around so much for so much time. Thank you so much. I'm sure you must have had a tough day at uh, at off, uh, at work too. Yes, that was that was indeed. No, we were all glued to the screen. I believe for past two hours. I think nobody from the no uh, no uh, participants who have joined the meet even would have had chance to. Uh, take their eyes away from the screen and uh, we were all clearly listening to whatever you have said thank you thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am thank so you so can much can you find any questions in the chat box yes yes ma'am uh quillbot changes the meaning of the sentences yeah that's what i told you quillbot is again it is a it's a tool it's just a tool so it's not uh, something which is um, out of it so you, it, it also requires your work to be there it helps you it helps you uh, with the reframing the sentences with paraphrasing the sentences but it is not a tool to be uh, totally adhered on yeah i will share the ppt with madam um, how, how to get to the on? is i mean how to get our uh, journal listed in yes, ugc care if you have a journal listed, uh, you are from the University of Madras. Do you are you affiliated to the University of Madras? No, Mama. Yeah, I am working in GSS Jain College, and we have a college TQ journal. It has got an yes. ISSN number. I would yes. like that journal to be listed in the UGC list or UGC Care list. Yes, so, how to apply for that, Ma'am? 
there are two ways one is you can approach the university of hyderabad but again they will ask you to come through your university so you'll have to approach the university of madras you'll have to come talk to the vice chancellor and convince him that this particular journal is a good journal and you have you, you have to give some kind of a assurance and uh, and they will write to the university of hyderabad which is a nodal center for south and once the university of hyderabad approves then it will be listed under the ugc uh, care list so it, it is a procedure that you have to follow thank you ma'am thank you so much yes. thank you thank you so much ma'am how to work on metadata keywords uh, vijay deepika can you please little bit i mean um, clarify on what is it that you are looking for vijay deepika are you here if you are here if you can just just give me a little bit of clarity on what you are actually looking for uh, ma'am uh, can i just go ahead ma'am because yeah, myself please, and uh, deepika ma'am are doing this work for past sure. two or three days we are trying to upload an article in a, a journal so they were keenly asking about keywords so we had few keywords and we are trying to place the keywords which is not accepted by the particular journal so sorry ma'am i i was just uh, finding some network issues ma'am yes ma'am thank no you problem, ma'am no 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 problem ah, yes. yeah. Ma'am, good evening, ma'am. It was a very great session. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was so the uh, all the input which you gave was so uh, uh, we can't get it outside just like that, ma'am. So meaningful, ma'am. And uh, my query was actually we were actually trying to publish uh, our article in one of the foreign journal, ma'am. They were actually uh, they asked us to enter the data on a metadata like uh, platform, ma'am. So I was not able to enter the keywords, ma'am. There, there is there any specific uh, uh, rules for uh, you know entering the keyword in such type of platforms, ma'am? Yes, there is. Again, if if it is a journal that is asking you to, then you will have to. you will have to check if the journals uh, have a specific um, uh, they they follow some particular uh, format okay what what metadata in fact means data about data so metadata in fact means keywords only keywords uh, are a part of metadata okay so okay. something that helps to find your article easily so do they have that particular journal do they follow any particular Uh, a scheme okay so there are a lot of schemes like we have library of congress headings subject headings we have um 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 medical subject headings for medical sciences we have um, certain tools which are already available so do they follow certain tools first you have to identify that you have to ask okay. them which tool they follow and based on that only you can give the key keywords okay ma'am okay ma'am so we so just have to identify to editor okay that's probably we need to identify the keywords which the journal is actually working on their yes Yes. Uh, journals uh, what do they follow do they follow a standard because there are certain books there are okay. certain standards which we follow to to provide keywords to provide the metadata itself so the journal will be having it so if they give that i mean then you can use uh, using that you can present it okay okay thank you so much ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am there was somebody who was raising the hand uh, uh mr uh, manju hosamani hosamani sir if you are here his or oh, his um he's having his hand up right yes ma'am so thank you so much people for sticking on for such a long time it's a long session actually to us so and without a break <laughs> so i was just thinking in the well today you know oh my god three uh, two hours session <laughs> because usually one and a half hour session will have a small break and then again a one and a half hour session will happen but this time it was a two hour session so uh, but i i had a great time i think i i really um i i actually live upon the uh, the enthusiasm of the uh, Uh, audience itself and i really found this uh, audience as a very enthusiastic group so thank you so much for keeping up my uh, you know whenever i was asking something a question in between you know that is the time when i i get the energy so thank you so much for keeping up my energy too uh, and i look forward to meet you sometime if you come to the university of madras thank you ma'am thank you i would like to thank uh, amaleshwari ma'am just one minute just one minute only uh, faizan is a ma'am and the team of amleshwari ma'am and uh, school of management dg 
a wonderful work because Pfizer Nizam, ma'am, you instilled the confidence in our in us that we can also be a social entrepreneur, taking up the thesis correction work and the paper writing work, and we also can earn ourselves. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I would like thank to place you, on you. record uh, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Amleshwari, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I uh, like I My told you, I met mine. her once. Pleasure is mine because after listening to you, I wanted uh, no you to meet young minds, research scholars, academicians because this uh, your 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 cast is becoming very important. So when they submit articles at that moment, it should not give them some jittery feeling. So it was very useful, uh, Dr. Fauzi. Thank Look, you. Thank you can so much. Thank you for posting the vote of thanks. Yes, ma'am. Go, Kapriya. Yes. Thank you for all the valuable insights and thoughtful information, ma'am. It has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event. I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our distinguished guest, Dr. Fazil Muniza, Assistant Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Madras. A, heartful, a thankful heart is not only the greatest virtue, but the parent of all other virtues. With this quote, I'd like to thank all of you for making this event successful. And the link for feedback and attendance for today's session is shared in the chat box. I kindly request everyone to take a few minutes to fill them up. Submitting the atten attendance and feedback is mandatory for the issue of certification. Thank you so much for joining us all. Have a great night ahead. Thank Bye you, Dr. Priya. Can we all turn on the cameras for a quick uh, group pick? Oh, yeah. Yes, Lokeshwari. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, ma'am.